Good morning, saints. Could we greet all of our mothers today? Happy Mother's Day. And, you know, we've been talking about the fact that if even you're a daddy, but God has used you to mother others, there is a redemptive grace in our male mothering, in our female mothering. We want to honor our moms today. You drop a stone in the water and the ripples go on indefinitely in every direction. And all of us, for good or for ill, have been influenced by our mamas. But we're going to focus on, on the good today. And we're going to talk about a very extraordinary story. How many of you are ready to just go, what? We're going to talk about Gallimaufry portraits number seven. We're in week seven. And we're going to talk about Daughters of the Highland Oracle today. I want to introduce you to the wise woman of Abel, the daughter of the Northern Oracle. Beloved, I want to begin with a, one of the most impacting little three points I've ever heard in a message. Three reasons why the devil hates women. As Satan hates all of us made in the image of God, but he has a unique hatred set aside for you who are actual mothers or have those of you who have, are anointed to bring mothering to those in your sphere of influence. The first reason Satan hates women is because you are the gate to life. Nothing comes into this realm unless it comes through you. In God's creative ordinance, he has caused you, whether physically, actual mothers, and spiritually, spiritual mothers, to be the door to life. If it doesn't come through you, it doesn't come into the world. Someone say amen. You are a gate to life. He hates the gate. He has a unique hate for the gate. And we men are hated for our own reasons. That's going to be in June, Papa's Day. All right, so we'll deal with all you uh, shenanigan boys uh, in, a, in a month. But mamas, you're the gate to life. Secondly, he hates your guts because you're the gate to life and, and you also fill in the blanks. You know, the Hebrew word for Eve was an ezer, a helpmate. You are like the grouting between the bricks in our male cat catastrophic lives. Okay, we're the bricks for God. And, but thank God for the grouting in between our bricks that hold everything together. Another amen is good right there. I'll bring my own next week if I can't get them from you. Well, one of our most blessed mothers just walked in. Sandra, we're just looking at your notes now, honey. Can we give love to Sandra, our, our major mother here in Israel? You wouldn't be getting these handouts if it wasn't for her. Those of you online that appreciate the handouts, this is the woman who you need to say, thank you, Sandra, or just lift her up in prayer. God knows she always needs it. Anywho, back to the text. God hates women because you're the gate to life. Secondly, he hates you because you fill in the blanks. As there means help meet. It means the surrounder, the one who, who comes in to our brick system and puts in all the grouting that holds it together because if you don't have the grouting, gentlemen, you're not going to be held together. And there's a unique Ezer anointing where you fill in the gaps. You fill in the gaps in our lives. You fill in the gaps of wisdom that we need so desperately. And the third reason the devil hates women is because you have a unique anointing to take in and multiply and give back. We give you seed, you give us a baby. We give you a man, you give us a husband. Do you know why husbands are so attractive to single women? Because you took him and you have filled in the gaps hmm? and you give him back and he's just got all kinds of finesse and those single women go, oh my God, I want a man like that. It's true. Because after dealing with you, he's something to be seen. He's something to be heard. Do you see the gift? But, 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 but you have to watch out because uh, the, the, the female anointing, the daughter of Eve anointing to take in, you got to watch what plugs into you and what you nurse. Mm -mm. Because you can nurse some bad things, too. And you can take in and multiply. You, you guys can nurse something beyond what we men could ever imagine. 
well, you, you just don't understand him. If you nurse the wrong man, we just look on and go, what is your problem? You go, you just don't understand it because you're nursing. You took in the wrong thing. You let the wrong thing. Don't let the wrong thing plug into you, women, relationally, because you can nurse that loser and make him even a bigger loser than he ever was and present him to the world. You got to watch what you take in, multiply, and give back. And I'm moving on to the next point before I'm murdered. So I see murder in somebody's eyes out there. Praise the Lord. So, beloved, you have to watch what you multiply because you can nurse something we can't even imagine. Now, for good or for ill, right? How many of you nurse the wrong uh, uh, thing? Uh, it, no, put your hands down. You don't need to respond. You know who you are, and I do too, most cases. So, the devil hates women because they're the you're the gate to life. You 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 fill in the blanks. You're the grouting in the system. We couldn't function without you. Nothing God builds can hold together without you being the grouting. All right? Now men have their own skills. But thank God for you. Amen. And like we said before church Nancy did, David did, you can be a father and mother in Israel. See, what do moms do? Moms first bring connection. The first intimacy you ever see, the first bit of love that is ever showered upon you came through your mother and the connection and the bonding that she gave to you. The first face you see is mama. The first invitation to love that is correctly given to you is mama. And so there's, there's, there's connection that comes our first instance of understanding of intimacy and closeness and bonding and our value comes through mama's eyes. But not only connection. She's the one that holds you together when you fall apart. Have you ever seen a child having a fit? Containment is the second thing mama offers us. Hmm? You see a baby screaming out of his mind. Well, you have a gift of grabbing that child, holding the baby, containing the baby. Ever heard an uncontained baby on an air flight? I did 13 hours to Turkey. That chick never once held that baby up in the gift of containment. Never did. And she screamed, and we were all ready to kill her, the baby, and everybody else that was starting to manifest. 13 hours of, ah! Mama, after connection, you bring containment. You pick up that baby, and you contain the child, and you teach the child that they're not all those emotions, but they're one person with all those emotions. Because, see, when babies are uncontained, they think they are anger. They're not angry. They're anger itself. So mama's gift, second gift after connection, is containment. You're supposed to contain the child and give the child a bottom that they can only fall so far before mama goes. You're contained, baby. You're not anger. You're just one child with many emotions, anger, which is one of them. But mama's containing you, and there's a bottom. You don't just fall forever. You fall for a little bit until mama steps in. Someone say, man, this is too good to be true. These aren't, this isn't even in the notes. So you, you got extra today. So in our mothering traits, all of us, whether moms or dads who are used for mothering, you're bringing closeness and you're bringing containment. And that's what you do. That's your counseling gift. That's your anointing. Well, we're going to look at an interesting woman today, Isha Chakna. Can you say Isha Chakna, Isha Chakna, the wise woman. We're going to look at a wise woman. Now, Hebrew has that interesting sound that you think you're hacking a loogie. Okay, that's called a chet, and it is, that's what it is. And Chakna, Isha Chakna means the wise woman. But we don't know her name, but we know her character. Remember, we've been studying about Absalom and the rebellion, the spirit of division that was in the nation, the spirit of rebellion that dominated through David's son named 
Absalom, who is now dead, hanging by his hair, and was tortured to death by the ten spearmen of Joab. And all the people said, all the men said, Amen. But as soon as they spear Absalom to death, another rebel named Shebna rises up. There's never a shortage of rebels to bring division to the nation. There's always a Shebna in the woodpile, right? Absalom's dead. Woo! The division is over. Oh, thank God, we're now at a place of peace. Oh, no, because Shebna, the son of Bikri, doesn't that fit? Isn't that, the, isn't that the son of Bikri? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it just sounds right. Sheba, the son of Bikri, and all the Bikrites, they're his followers. As soon as Absalom dies and you think division is over in the land and everything is getting calm, David is back on the throne. Oh, thank you, Jesus. There is, is another rebel that arises named Sheba, and Sheba comes, and he is going to bring division. And Shebna is used by the devil to bring division to the ten tribes of Israel to the north. Remember, there's ten tribes to the north we call Israel, two tribes to the south we call Judah. And Judah's fine. They've got David. He's from their line. And they pick David up, and they're going to protect him. And yet they got the ten northern tribes who say, well, we just don't like that Judah's getting all this attention just because David's from your tribe. Blah, 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 blah. Well, we have more invested. We've got 10 tribes. You only have two. So immediately the devil finds another rebel to foment and continue the division. Any division in our land? No! Nothing new under the sun, honey. Before God moves in a profound way, there's always another rebel. Plenty of Shebas. The sun's a big crack. Well, we're going to look at a town. It's called... Abel. Where's Abel? Well, it strategically occupies the border between modern Syria, Lebanon, and Israel. Anything going on right now in the borders between modern Syria, Lebanon, and Israel? The town of Abel was about 25 miles north of the Sea of Galilee in the Hula Valley. And it fell in the lot of Dan, the tribal lot allotment of Dan. But it's way up north, and you cannot visit this site right now because of the chaos that is bombing this particular site. So I feel my message has been underscored in a good way. God, beloved, wants to anoint you as his unique mother who can minister connection and containment in the division surrounding your life. Look east, west, north, and south. Remember the verse I gave about David? And it said, and the, it, it came to pass that God gave David rest on all four sides of his kingdom. That's east, west, north, south. All the division was dissolved. East, west, north, south. And that's going to be because you, the wise woman of Abel, or the man who is mothering, giving connection, giving containment, and surrounding all those around you, emanating peace where there's division. Did you know you are God's answer to prayer? Remember last week we looked at Hushai? What was he? He was first and foremost an answer to prayer wherever he went. David had not finished saying, Lord, frustrate the counsel of Ahithophel, and he ran smack in to Hushai at the top of Mount of Olives. And there he was with his torn clothes and the dust on his head saying, I'm here, mighty king, I'm here. And he was used by God to frustrate the counsel of Ahithophel, that rat and dog of division, all right? who was gifted and talented, but God loved him. But the devil used this man to try to bring division and literally cut the head off of David. But God's always got an answer to prayer, namely you who shy. So you're who shy last week, and you're the wise woman of Abel today. Just be inclusive. Come on, calm down. All right. The city of Abel, is, it, it, it was a sacred city, and I'm going to read the text now. Because it's in 2 Samuel chapter 20, 15 through 22. All the troops with Joab came and besieged Sheba in Beth, in Abel Beth Maaka. They built a siege ramp to the city 
and it stood against the outer fortifications. While they were battering the wall to bring it down. Are you under siege? Precious women. Did I guarantee you you are. Somebody hates you. A wise woman. There she is. Here's the Isha. She called from the city. Listen, listen. Tell Joab to come here so I can speak to him. I like her already. Get Joab, the bloodthirsty leader of David's army, over here. Where is he? And she's shouting from the wall. Mama's got some clout already in the city. She's intensively famous in the city. She's already got the attention of her people. Now, not a man. She gets on the wall. Says, Joab, get over here. And he went toward her, and she asked, Are you Joab? I am, he answered. And she said, Listen to what your servant has to say. I'm listening, he said. <laughs> you got a lot of folk listening to you. You don't realize that's another servant. Long ago, they used to say, Joab, get your answer at Abel, and that settled the matter. We're the peaceful and faithful in Israel. You are trying to destroy a city that is a mother in Israel? Why do you want to swallow up the Lord's inheritance? Far be it for me, <laughs> Joab replied. Far be it for me to swallow up or destroy. Now, this man's been swallowing up and destroying all of his enemies that are trying to fill in a place in front of David. This is a murderous man who's going to get his own pretty quick. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God. God always is on time with bringing his judgment. That's why he says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. You don't need to bring vengeance. God's really good. And when Joab gets his own, all the people say, hey. Yeah, just like Absalom, remember? Remember he violates the 10 concubines of David on the roof and he gets speared to death by 10 spearmen of Joab. <laughs> Hung by his hair on an oak tree. Suspended between heaven and earth. Neither earth wanted him or heaven wanted him. And there they are, Don's go, how's that, buddy? How's that, buddy? And then they tore him down, and they gave him an ignoble burial under rocks. This man was a loser. But as soon as Absalom is cut down, remember he was hung in the tree by his anointing? Do you know, beloved, if you don't understand your anointing, you'll hang by it. I know a lot of gifted, talented people. That's another message. Don't get hung by your anointing. I didn't look over to Jeff for for any reason right then i he was just in my purview and he's got some pretty good hair i i'm there's no danger in my case well we don't accept that pastor we love you beloved isaiah 66 13 says as a mother comforts her children so i will comfort you he will give you the connection that you need, beloved, and the bonding that you need, and the, the momminess you never got, the mothering you never got. I, I did just Nancy told me, they said, Craig, you're just a great big baby. You just need to be mother. And she gave me another squeeze. It's true. But you know what? I was never mothered in a, a male-female relationship. I'm 65 years old in less than 30 days, and I still never got the mommy that I needed. I'm still, my tanks are, love tanks are still empty. Now, you're looking at me going, I don't want to mommy you. That's your business, and I cast that thing out in Jesus' name. It's unclean. But you know, when we don't get our love tanks filled with that connection that mommy was made to give and that containment, then when we break up and have a fit, we think we're all the emotions. We're not just angry. We think we are anger, and that is a, not a healthy thing in your 20s, 30s, 40s, or 50s, that when you go south emotionally, you think you're all these crazy, uncontainable emotions. That's what mommy does. So God has lots of mothering you know, on all four corners of my life that give me that connection I need and give me that containment I need. And by the way, that's what you are in this house. You're mothering, whether you're a daddy or not. Nancy mothered me. I get my hugs. Kim comes in. I get my hug. Gretchen comes in. I get my hug. I jump up and down like a little boy, and I soak it all up for things. are just soaked up. When they leave me, they, they're powder. I've taken all the mommy I can. Come on, Isha Hakna. We all need the wise woman that can discern our need and give us connection give us containment, and put a bottom to our despair. Have you ever seen the babies that have no bottom to their despair? They don't get, mo they're, they're absent mommy. 
a child is supposed to start un being undone and then they're to be contained immediately by somebody. And I was on that flight to Turkey. It was 13 hours and there was a woman and she was just sagging. She, she was holding her baby uncontained in her arms, standing up and the baby, went, ah, the baby was insane. And everything kept me from going over and doing what I do so well, which is to contain. You know, and every mom was just going, can you just contain the baby? Can you just give him a little? Yeah, no, she just hung him there uncontained. Please don't be the mother that leaves your child hung uncontained. All right, you made your point, move on. I know I'm moving on. Don't, you don't have to tell me, Holy Ghost, what I'm going to do. Now let's look, let's look at five traits of the wise woman of Abel. She's called the daughter of the Highland Oracle. Did you know the city of Abel had a history? And the history was way up north, so it was one of David's boundary cities. It protected Israel. When they were attacked from the north, Abel was there as a siege protection city. But secondly, it was a city known for its prophetic insight. Did you know back in the day when people needed answers to questions prophetically, they went to the city? They had prophetesses and prophets at the city. Wouldn't you like to be known as the wise woman of Abel? or the wise man of the Northern Oracle. What a beautiful title. You're the daughter of the Northern Oracle. I'm speaking to all of you today. And sons of God, you're the sons of the Northern Oracle. People can come to you when they need protection and they need prophecy. We all need to be spoken to prophetically. We all need to be connected with and, and we all need to be contained. And beloved, your identity is that of the mother of the Northern Oracle or the father of the Northern Oracle. She says to Joab, she says, listen, fool. She says, way back, they used to come to Abel, and the issue was settled. If you wanted a peaceful settling of your issue, you sent someone to this city of Abel. And the folk, it was drenched in Scripture and and, and it drenched in the Holy Ghost. Beloved, you are drenched in Scripture. You are drenched in the Holy Spirit. That's why people come to you, because they know if they come to you, you like the city of Abel, you're drenched in Scripture and counsel. Now, I don't think you maybe realize that, because the devil's been telling you you're plenty of nothing. But I know you, and I know who I call. And every time I call any one of you or contact any one of you, I get drenched in Scripture and drenched in the Holy Ghost, and I'm, I'm, I'm contained. Pastor's contained now. He seems a little more calm. Why doesn't someone contain him before the preaching? Because I'm much more amusing uncontained. Amen. Don't sleep on Saturday night, Pastor, is what they tell me. And at least Gretchen does. She goes, did, did you sleep last night? I said, oh, yeah. She goes, oh, no. Not, not, not as good as it could be. Five traits. Gretchen, I'm trying to move ahead and I'll talk later. We've got treats for our mamas later, too. And you know, we're going to pray that God gives you extra treats, beloved. Because you are the wise woman or man from Abel. People know in the land. It is known in the gates. But when they come to you, they're drenched with the Spirit and saturated with Scripture. Isn't that what we want to greet everybody with and be known as? They don't just call us and get cursed. They call us and they get release and they get connection and they get containment and there's a bottom put on their despair. And by the time they hang up from you, they're at peace. So, oh, you may have to talk for two hours, but when they're done, they've drunk at the well. Sit wise, city of Abel. You are to be known as a son of the Northern Oracle, a daughter of the Northern Oracle, and this church, Bethel Christian Fellowship, is a city of the Northern Oracle. People can come in here and they say, I don't know where this guy's from, but I just always feel a little bit better when he's done. All right, five traits of the daughter of the Highland Oracle. Number one, she was famous in her own sphere of influence. Joab comes. And he is going to bombard this city. It's under siege because this wicked son of Bikri, he's called. Mm -hmm. That just says it all, doesn't it? Sheba, the son of Bikri, 
he rises up as the next rebel to take the demonic place of Absalom, and he runs all the way up north as far as he can because they're after him. They're after him. They're going to get him. David said, bring me the head of Sheba, the son of Bichri. Beloved, beloved, did you know that when you cut off the head of a snake, you fully neutralized its power against you? Why is there so much decapitation mentioned in the Bible, which I love personally? And so does Rebecca Holzneck taking care of Michael today. She goes, Craig, give me one of those Old Testament sermons. I gave her the Absalom sermon, hung by his hair, stabbed to death by the ten. And she went, oh, my God's the Old Testament God. She said, Craig, you're in the New Testament. I want you to go to the left and preach me all those sermons to the left of the book. Someone say amen. I know I've got some yoke fellows out there that would love to yoke all these evil people up. Don't worry, God's got them. But she was famous in her own sphere of influence. And it says that Sheba, the son of Bichri, went to the hill country, and he went up north as far as he could go, running from justice, and he goes into the city of Abel, locks the gate, and guess what? The men of God follow him, all Joab. You don't want Joab in his best moment against you, because he will skin you alive. But there he is outside the gate. He pounds on the door and he says, okay. And he immediately, look what Joab does. Immediately he violates the scriptures. The first thing rebel rousers do is violate the word of God. In Deuteronomy 20 verses 10 through 14, the scripture said, when the people of Israel came against a besieged city, the first thing they were to do is offer peace and have dialogue. They would offer peace before war. Guess what Joab doesn't do? He doesn't offer peace before war. He says, take it down. And he starts the battering rams, and he's starting to build the siege mount. Did you know the Romans were so excellent in sieges that if, if, if you, you were inside with enough food and said, we can live here for 10 years, the general would say, then we'll see you in the 11th. They never lost a siege, the Romans. And this man, he says, we're going to tear this wall down. We're battering the rams already. And this wise woman knew the scripture. Beloved, are you saturating in the scriptures? Do you know God's word? Because the more you put in, you may just have John 3.16 rattling around in there. God's all over the world. He gives, well, that's a nice rattle. Put a little bit more in there, honey. Because the more scripture you have and the more Holy Ghost saturated you are, when people come to you, that's what they get. That's the rain shower they get, Scripture and the Spirit. And this woman notices Joab has forgotten one thing, the Bible. The last people that attacked you and tried to destroy you, they lacked a little understanding of the Scripture, maybe just a... So she throws the book at him. She says, Joab, Deuteronomy 20, 10 through 14, what does it say? You do not attack you do not batter down the walls of a city until you have had dialogue and have sought for peace. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 10 through 14, as I'm sure you all were reading this morning. Well, there it is now, in case you need it. She says, I'm sorry, I'm a scripture girl. I'm a Bible lady representing this whole town. What the heck do you think you're doing violating Deuteronomy 20, 10 through 14 by tearing things down before you dialogued for peace? And he goes, up, up. that's what he does. He goes, far be it from me to swallow up or destroy. That's all he's ever done is swallow up and destroy everybody that disagrees with him. Go look up Joab. He's a pain. He said, that's not the case. A, a man named Sheba, son of Bichri, from the hill country of Ephraim, he, he's lifted up his hand against King David. And uh, you give me the one man, and I'll withdraw from the city. And she says, uh, his head will be thrown unto you in just a minute. I love this woman. Notice she was famous in her own sphere of influence, beloved you women of God need to embrace your intensive fame. Do you remember the difference between intensive fame and extensive fame? Extensive fame means everybody knows you. 
you're, you're, you're a celebrity in the kingdom. Intensive fame is something we all have, which is direct influence among our circle, our sphere of influence. And guess what? We are famous, all of us, in our sphere of influence. You have intensive fame. You may not have extensive fame. You're not Joyce Meyer. All right. She has extensive fame. God bless her. But you have intensive fame that involves your sphere of influence and you are a legend in your circle. So God says, use your intensive fame. Wise women of the ball. Give that wish wisdom. Gush it out. Every time they touch you like a sponge, may they be soaked with wisdom in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, you're legendary in your sphere. I hear about you. I hear about you. And you know what's blessed about this church? And we don't want anybody coming in. We got enough. God counts by ones. You are so precious. Everyone in this room, I know you personally. I've dealt with you personally. I know every time I come to you or I speak to you or I enter your presence, I get drenched with the Spirit and drenched with the Word. There's nothing I ask that I don't get a scriptural, grounded, Holy Ghost, saturated, love-based, cooked response. And I'm spoiled to death about it. So I want to honor all of you today, mommies and motherers. You're all blessed in Jesus' name. We're going to pray over you in a minute. She was famous in her own sphere of influence. You are to embrace your intensive fame. Secondly, she knew and represented the best in her historical lineage. Beloved, we need to eat the hay as well as spitting out the sticks of our family lineage. Did you know she knew the history of her city? She knew the history of her lineage. Are you aware of the history through which God has moved in your family of origin? You, I know the bad. Oh, it was nasty. And daddy was an alcoholic and a pornographer. And the, yeah, there are sticks in your lineage. But what about the hay? Today, we're going to talk about the hay that's in your lineage. If you just get one stick of hay out of your whole family lineage with daddy, but he, but he did teach us the Bible. Okay, let's eat the hay today. It's time. Notice this wise woman of Abel. She knew the history of her city. She knew the history of her own lineage, and she ate the hay, and she celebrated the hay. Let's flush the sticks, but do pick up the one bit of hay. Well, he was a devil, but, but he, he, he did teach me a lot. Okay, Nature, we're going to eat the hay today. Okay, forget the sticks. We'll talk about that at our inner healing seminar. But aren't you tired of just hearing every nasty stick of your lineage? This woman knew her history in a positive way. And she knew the city. She said, Joab, first of all, you don't know the Bible. Because Deuteronomy 20, 10 through 14 says you can't do what you're trying to do right now. Joab like went, oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah, you better be sorry. He's going to be dead soon. Don't worry about it. If she says she went to her people with her wise advice, and they cut off the head of Sheba, the son of Bichri, and she threw it to Joab. So he sounded the trumpet, and the men disappeared from the city. Beloved women of God, I love you so much, but please cut the right head off the right man and throw it at the right time over the right wall. Amen. I will take the offering. cut the right head of the right hand and throw it over the right wall with the right heart. Okay? We got a lot of categories there to meet before we behead someone. Amen. And you have a gift, some of you. I've been the beneficiary on a number of ends in that department. Okay. So she knew and respected the best in her historical lineage. So she did, she brought up the good. She ate the hay. She highlighted the hay. She said, you know what? This, I am a righteous woman. I am a peace bringer. I am like my city. And do you know what Abel was called the city? The, a mother in Israel. When you call a city a mother, because when you went to that city with an act of, a question of counsel, you got connection and you got containment. And there was a bottom put under your despair. And you went home with an answer. Is that how you are, beloved? I know you are. Here, I'm talking in a veiled reference to whoever the heck is looking in here. Because I know who's here. Amen. Still keep going over to Jeff. Don't know why. Anyway. Brother, you sat there. I, I don't know. I'm just perusing. The, I see your lovely wife, but I just keep focusing on Jeff. Everybody pray for Jeff. You don't know him. Just pray.
Sheba, the son of Bichri. That'll win friends and influence people if you can just memorize that. So she represented and she knew the best in her historical lineage. Next, she was loyal under pressure. You know, your best comes out when you're squeezed. You squeeze the lemon, you get the lemonade. You squeeze the olive and you get the oil. You squeeze the grape and you get the wine. You squeeze the grain and you get the bread. You squeeze the clouds and you get the rain. Your best comes out when you're squeezed. And Jesus is our master chef making things up. And he goes, oh, there's, uh, there's Elsa. Bring her over here and go squeeze her into this stew right now. And did you know he's been squeezing you over the lives of others because he knows you're saturated with scripture and you're anointed with oil of the Holy Ghost. And you go here. People from Bethel have a great reputation of being pretty sharp and pretty gracious, pretty merciful, pretty loving. Boy, you can get some good wisdom. If you squeeze over here, right? And I don't know what you get at your church. You could just get rotten milk or something. I don't know about that, which I have a history with this week. Brookie, my daughter, called me and said, Daddy, Daddy, you, you bought milk. It slid under the seat, and it's now rotten, and it just blew up. <laughs> I'm just going to leave you with that as I close. She was loyal under pressure. This woman, the best, came out when she was squeezed. And next, fourth, she gave wisdom in a critical hour and settled a siege. Beloved, wisdom in a critical hour, that's what you need to be. The most important person is the person that has the answer that you need right now with regard to wisdom. That's the most important person in the universe for you. And you got, I got a whole bunch of them right here. And we will give all their phone numbers out for you to call at 3 a.m. in the morning as we close. Starting with Gretchen, who just rebelled. There's a rebel in the midst. It's a Bicreite. So the head comes off. Beloved, all the head chopping in the Bible is for a reason. When the head is chopped off of that thing that is causing rebellion and division, that's when God brings peace. But you've got to decapitate the thing. He, he doesn't want you. He wants the head of the thing that's been tormenting you. So in intercession, you need to cut the head off that which has been tormenting you and everybody around you and throw that thing over the wall. <laughs> and they took that to King David. They said, here's your head, your majesty. This is it. Now, what about all those other Bikriites that went in with him? They're not mentioned, because when you cut the head off the snake, the rest of the snake doesn't matter. You don't need to cut the head off everything. You need to cut the head off the root problem. And they got, they got Sheba, the son of Bikri. They got all the Bikriites. They all calmed down. They said, we're fine. We're okay. We love you. Now we're praying, Lord Jesus. Help the woman. Yeah, because she's, she's looking around for another head. Because once you get one head, you sort of have a pick. But you hear anybody else giving trouble? No, no, man. No, we're fine. God bless you. God bless David. Let's sing some psalms right now. What a wonderful songwriter, your majesty. She gave wisdom in a critical hour, settled a siege. She threw the right head over the right wall at the right time with the right heart. And the last point, her life was other-centered. Beloved, did you know when you won't fight for yourself, you'll fight for somebody else? Isn't that true? You won't fight for you. But if someone touches your baby, it's like, whoa, you're, you get up with your armor on and your helmet, right? And you just, oh, hit me, kick me, beat me, make me write bad checks. But when it's other-centered, you get up in your prayer closet, right? So that's good. I mean, so use that to the glory of God, but we do eventually want you also to receive nurturing and love and value uh, for you. That's a deep healing Jesus has been doing in your life. Oh, beloved. Oh. You know, I just thought as we close right now, I've been thinking a lot. I'm going to be 65 in less than 30 days, and I've been thinking a lot about my legacy. Not obsessively, but just help, helpfully. I want to have been known as a wise man. I want to be known as someone who, when squeezed, gave out blessing. 
I want the, re- the legacy of someone to say, when you spent time with him or you had a phone call with him, all was well after he prayed at the end. He brought peace, east, west, north, south. Don't you want that legacy too? You don't have to be perfect. You have to be the, the perfect, imperfect person you are. The wise woman of Abel. We want your whole house to be known as a wise city where people come and there's an end to the matter as soon as they're done giving counsel. Isn't it true when they call you, they don't have to worry about calling 20 other airheads and watching television all week. And you don't get drenched with scripture or doused with the Holy Ghost. You get the, the latest episode of the, you know what I mean? Because they're not, they don't, you know when you squeeze people and the wrong thing comes out. Let us conclude. Father, we thank you first and foremost for your grace. We thank you that whenever we squeeze you, Lord Jesus, out comes counsel, out comes connection, out comes a bottom to our despair. And Lord, I praise you now for all of your precious men, women, boys, and girls who are wise women of Abel, who are wise men of Abel, who are known, who are known in the gates that if we come to them, the matter will be settled biblically with the anointing of the Holy Ghost and settled for sure. I, I honor every man, woman, boy, and girl under the sound of my voice who is a good squeeze. Thank you, Jesus. And we pray you, you, you heal us, Lord, and you take all the heads off that are causing division in our lives. Throw them over the wall, God. Get, get rid of the division and the rebellion that is so easily planted in our souls. And cleanse our temples, Lord. Cleanse our lives. Make our homes. Abel. Father, I thank you for a blessing upon every one of our mothers today those who have given so much of themselves, Lord, in every way, shape, and form, who have dropped big stones in our lake and they have been causing redemptive east, west, north, south influence all through us, Lord God. Keep the influence going, Lord. Bring inner healing to all of our issues, Lord. Remove all the heads of the bickeries in our life. Make us a place of peace. And all the people said, Amen. David, come on up. David is a wise man of Abel, and he's going to come up and bless you now. Be blessed in Jesus' name, everyone. As, as you gather the elements, let's take the unleavened bread. I just want you to listen to the words of Jesus this morning that he spoke in John 10, verse 10. He said that he came that you might have life and enjoy life and have it in abundance. And he paid for that. He took the beatings that you and I deserve. He was pierced. He was scourged. He allowed his body to be broken. But right now you can receive that life, that physical life that he so painfully paid for with his body. Let's break the bread and let's partake. And Jesus has called you to eternal life. Boy, he paid that with his shed blood, that all your sins would be forgiven. You now have free entrance into heaven because the king has called you and you've answered and said yes. Let's partake with his blood. Be healed in Jesus' name this week. Be restored in Jesus' name. And as Pastor Craig said, you know, be blessed. If you have some extra seed left over from your work this week, we ask you to plant your seed here in the house of Bethel. We'll, we'll receive that contribution. Whatever the Holy Spirit moves you to do, we'll accept that because this is good soil here at Bethel. May his word go forth and continue to go forth in Jesus' name. Thank you.
We hope today's message has been a blessing to you. And if it has, please visit our website at drcraigjohnson.org. There you can find additional messages of encouragement. And if our ministry has been a blessing to you, please consider us in your ministry giving, as we depend solely on the financial assistance of our listeners like yourself. Also, please feel free to send any personal prayer requests. You can find us online at drcraigjohnson.org. God bless you.